Hello everyone. Today in this video, we will be learning how to use code first approach with Entity Framework Core in .NET 9. To understand it, we will create a simple web API that interacts with the database, perform migrations and test the API using Postman. Let's first understand what is code first approach. Code first is an approach in Entity Framework Core where we define the database schema using c -sharp classes instead of designing it manually in SQL Server. In simple terms, we write code first and the database is creating automatically based on our model classes, right? Why we use code first approach? I mean, why choose code first approach? Why it is a better approach? Because uh, it provides you more control over database design. Developer define the structure using c -sharp classes. No need to manually create tables in SQL Server. Easier database migration. Changes in c -sharp model can be easily applied to the database using migrations. No need to manually alter the database schema. And no need for a database upfront. I mean, we can start development without having a pre-existing database. EF Core will generate the database automatically. It's the best for agile development. I mean, useful when you're working in a fast-changing environment, right? The database structure evolves as the project progresses. It works well with version control. I mean, uh, migrations are tracked in source control like Git, making it easier to roll back changes if needed, right? So, first we will setting up a .NET Core Web API project in Visual Studio 2022. Then installing, configuring Entity Framework Core. And then defining a model uh, code first approach. Creating and applying database migrations. Writing CRUD operations in the Web API. And testing API endpoint using Postman. So, without wasting time, let's get started. Okay, open Visual Studio 2022. Go to File, New Project, and select ASP.NET Core Web API Project. Click on Next. Now we provide the project name, something like uh, EF Core Code First Demo. Click on Next. We have .NET Framework 9. Okay. Click on Create. Okay, we have uh, our .NET 9 Web API project ready. To use uh, Entity Framework Core, we need to uh, install the required some NuGet packages, right? So, uh, open the Package Manager console. Okay, so uh, we install these two uh, packages to use the Entity Framework Core. I run both of these packages here. Okay, uh, it has run Entity Framework Core SQL Server. Now let's install another package. Okay, click on Enter. Okay, now we have installed Entity Framework Core and SQL Server support, right? Okay, now we need to configure our database connection in appsetting.json, right? So we open app setting.json and add the connection string under allowed hosts. Okay, we have added connection string. You need to replace server uh, with your actual SQL server instance and we keep the database name like EF Core Demo DB. Okay, now let's create our model class that represents the database table. Uh, right click on the project, add folder, give the model folder name as models. Inside model, create a C-Shop class uh, named product. We define our model like public and id. It should be as a primary key. So we provide a key attribute. We define uh, other properties like name and price as well. This product class 
represents our database table, right? Okay, now we need to uh, create our DB context class. Our DB context class, which will be abstraction or our database. I create a new folder called data. Inside data, create a new class, application DB context. We inherit this class from DB context. In entity framework core, DB context is the bridge between your C sharp application and the database. When we define a custom DB context class, we typically pass configuration option through constructor uh, like this. And this parameter DB context option application db context option is used to configure how at entity framework core connects to the database right and base option this calls the base class db context constructor and passes the options parameter right it ensures that the database configuration like connection string uh, provider etc is properly set okay now we go to program.cs and register our db context inside builder.services right builder.services.add db context okay we have registered our db context now our application knows about the database as well okay uh, next we need to apply migration so now let's generate the database using migrations uh, open package manager console run the command like add migration initially create okay it is creating a migration with a, a name initially create okay so uh, it has created a migration here so next we run the command update database uh, it will create database if it doesn't already exist and our products table as well Okay, so uh, let's verify if the database is uh, created. I refresh databases and see we have EF core demo DB and see if we have table as well. Okay, our products table is not created. There is some issue. We go back to our project. Okay, we have not created DB set property here of type product. So it has not created corresponding table because this application db context manage your database connection and products table so we create a db set property of type products so we have created this property uh, let's create another migration now i call it initial create to okay this time it has created migration with proper products table and its property so now let's call update database command okay let's get back to sql server and see if this table is created so we refresh go to table okay uh, products table is created okay we put some sample data inside this products table we have this sample command to put sample data inside this products table so uh, let's select the ef code demo db and run this command okay so we have put some sample data inside this table so far our migration is working fine so now let's get back to our project and create an web api to interact with our database go to controller right click on the controller click on add i click api API with action using entity framework. Click on add. Okay, you need to select a model class here. I select the products and DB context class or custom DB context application DB context. Okay, click on add. You can even create your empty controller and manually add these methods, but I'm using this scaffolding option of entity framework provided uh, by the framework. Uh, click on add okay so our controller has been created so let's check it yeah we have almost all the methods perform CRUD operations so uh, let's run the project okay it has executed but it has not launched browser so uh, let's launch the browser as well so we know which port it's running on so i go to properties 
launch setting dot json and i say launch browser true and uh, i run it okay it has launched my browser uh, i know what endpoint i need to provide to hit my controller so i need api products i provide it like api products and click enter okay so we got the data from the database we have successfully created and tested our api okay so we have created our dotnet web api using the code first approach with entity favor core you can test this api using postman as well just go to the postman i give the endpoint here and click on next and we got the result set in json okay uh, if you found this video helpful please like share and subscribe for more tutorials see you in the next video thanks for watching